According to a poll, she's one of the three best-known women in American history. Internationally celebrated, she had become, in the words of Time magazine, mother to the world. The book that has made her famous is Coming of Age in Samoa, on which she begins work at the age of 23. In it, she announces her sensational discovery of a Polynesian culture free of the stresses of adolescence, a place of free love and harmony. Here, children sail painlessly and effortlessly into adulthood in a lush tropical setting. The book becomes a classic and has a profound effect on future generations of Americans who strive to emulate its findings. In 1940, another 23-year-old, Derek Freeman, arrives in Samoa aboard a banana boat out of Wellington, New Zealand. He is a fervent believer in Mead's Samoa, whose account he has read and reread. He's taking up his new post as a school teacher in Apia. Awaiting him, he is sure, is the island paradise whose description has so captivated him. But instead, he finds that Margaret Mead's Samoa is largely make-believe. He encounters a puritanical people, obsessed by rank, among whom aggression is commonplace. After collecting evidence for 40 years, he publishes his refutation of Mead's conclusions, an academic bombshell. The result is the greatest controversy in the history of anthropology. Uh, Coming of Age Samoa was a classic textbook for undergraduate teaching. Millions, who knows, five, ten million Americans may have read that as undergraduates in universities. And of course it was taught to them as being true. And then along comes Derek Freeman and says it's all false. What Derek did, you see, was, was a double whammy. He didn't just attack it in, in a theoretical way. He attacked it in the person of, of, the, of the goddess, uh, of the super celebrity who had made anthropology, who was anthropology, was the symbol of anthropology to the world, and who was the prime promulgator of this doctrine uh, to the world on behalf of anthropology. So he, he did a thing that was doubly bad. He didn't just say, you know, um, this religion is the theologically problematical. Um, he said, God is wrong. <laughs> or rather, in this case, the goddess is wrong. Uh, she couldn't be, you see. One of the leading anthropologists came out immediately after the first word of Derek's book was out and said, I haven't read the book, but I know he's wrong. That's a bit depressing in a field that thinks it's a science. The controversy of nature nurture was an important one which should have been dealt with in his book but wasn't dealt with because he was so interested in ruining the reputation that Margaret Mead had built on her Samoa work. I think that there was a kind of spirit of, oh boy, let's do some debunking, that'll be fun. that ended when people realized that this wasn't just Margaret Mead bashing, that this was an attack on the fundamental ideas of the discipline. I've had some anthropologists say to me that it wasn't good for the discipline as a whole. And I said, why not? Why not? If we can't stand scrutiny, then what are we worried about? I'm not worried about being scrutinized saying, yeah, so, well, that was wrong, so look at everything we've done right. It was a political backlash. Out comes this book, which supports a right-wing political backlash and gives reason why, in fact, we should be following biologically-based national policies. So that's extremely threatening. I'm not sure he was aware of that. Well, I'm a little concerned uh, as a university professor because my... Some of my students tell me that in their anthropology classes, they are almost actively discouraged from reading Freeman's book, which I find absolutely extraordinary. In Science 83, which is a publication of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, my book was rated as the most important book of the year in the social sciences and recommended for holiday reading. Now, at this very time, the American Anthropological Association was meeting in Chicago, its annual meeting. And there, the opposition to my refutation was so intense that 
a motion was passed condemning the book as unscientific and as possessing all other kinds of defects and they then voted on it Th this is a quite extraordinary event because the scientific truth is something that cannot be settled politically